Last time, we introduced a number of operators, a and a dagger, and wrote the Hamiltonian in the following way, as a a dagger minus one half. We also calculated the commutator of a and a dagger, which was plus one. Using this commutator, we can exchange the place of a and a dagger. Finally, as an abbreviation for a dagger a, we will write a capital N, which stands for number operator. There is a good reason for replacing a dagger a with n instead of a a dagger, but first let's talk about the commutators of n. The first commutator we will look at is the commutator of n with the annihilation operator a. This is given by a dagger a and a. Now to simplify such a commutator, we can make use of an commutator identity. That is, if we have a commutator like AB with C, we can simplify this in the following way. Applying this formula yields the following result. This commutator is zero because every operator commutes with itself. And this operator here is minus one. So that means that the result of the commutator NA is minus A. Next, let's talk about the commutator of N with A dagger. This is given by N A dagger equals A dagger A with A dagger. Here we can make use of the same identity as before and write this as A dagger and A with A dagger plus the commutator of A dagger with A dagger and a. Again, this commutator vanishes, and here we have plus 1. So the result of this is plus a dagger. We will need these results later, but first let's talk about another commutator of the number operator. And that is the commutator of n with the Hamiltonian h. Remember that the Hamiltonian was given by n plus 1 half. So this commutator is kind of trivial because n always commutes with itself. Since the number operator and the Hamiltonian are commuting, they share a common set of eigenvectors. This means if the Hamiltonian has an eigenvector psi, which gives us the energy and psi, then we can apply the number operator on the same state psi and get again psi as an eigenvector. However, possibly with a different eigenvalue. To calculate this eigenvalue, we can use this equation and plug in the Hamiltonian. So we have n on psi plus one half psi, because the Hamiltonian was n plus one half, and this gives epsilon psi. And since we know that n on psi gives lambda times psi, this shows us that lambda plus one half is equal to epsilon. So if we calculate the eigenvalue of the number operator, all we need to do is add one half and we get the energy. Now why is it useful to look at the number operator instead of the Hamiltonian? What comes next is the reason why we call a and a dagger ladder operators. Imagine there was a different state, let's call it phi, and phi is given as a dagger acting on psi. We will now let the number operator act on this new state and see what happens. What we can do is exchange the position of n and a dagger. So we can write a dagger n acting on psi, but then we also have to add the commutator of n and a dagger. Well, we calculated that before, and this is simply a dagger acting on psi. Now, n acting on psi simply gives an eigenvalue of lambda. So this is lambda and a dagger psi plus a dagger psi. Now we can use our definition of phi and switch back. So we can replace a dagger phi here and here with our state phi. And if you write the equation like this, as lambda plus one acting on phi, we see that phi is also an eigenvector of n, of the number operator, however, with a different eigenvalue. This means that if the state psi is a solution of the Schrodinger equation, 
then a dagger psi is also a solution of the Schrodinger equation with a different eigenvalue, that is with a different energy, with a higher energy. So somehow we created a bit of energy and this is the reason why we call a dagger the creation operator. We say the eigenvalue was raised by one. We can do the same calculations by using a instead of a dagger. So that means that our new introduced state phi is now a acting on psi. Again, we use the commutator of n and a to write this as a n psi plus the commutator. Well, the commutator, as we calculated before, is minus a, and here is psi again. n on psi gives lambda times psi, and then we can switch back from psi to phi again. Rewriting this again shows that phi is an eigenvector of the number operator, this time with a lower eigenvalue. What this means is that if psi is a solution to the Schrodinger equation, then a dagger psi is a solution of the Schrodinger equation and a acting on psi is a solution of the Schrodinger equation. Now it will become clear why we called them ladder operators in the first place. If we start with a state psi, which has some energy epsilon, then we know that the state a dagger acting on psi is also a solution of the Schrodinger equation with an energy epsilon plus one. So the creation operator created a certain amount of energy. And as well, a acting on psi is a solution to the Schrodinger equation with an energy eigenvalue epsilon minus one. And this goes on and on. So we also have a dagger, a dagger acting on psi as a solution of the Schrodinger equation with an eigenvalue of epsilon plus two. So to summarize, the reason why ladder operators are so useful is that if we start at a certain solution psi, we can repeatedly apply them and get every other solution of the Schrodinger equation. And the reason we found out about this useful behavior of ladder operators was by introducing the number operator n.